How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. We're going to be launching a new series here and it's going to be called Map Breakdown. I'm going to be breaking down every single map, but I want to start with the newest and latest and greatest map here and that is Chalet. Now Chalet is not completely new. It's actually a reworked map, basically just meaning they took the original foundation of Chalet and just made it a bit more competitive and a little bit more balanced. So this is the first of many of these map breakdowns and I'm going to follow this guideline. Let me know if you guys want me to add anything, but I'm going to start with a basic layout and callouts of the map, including the spawn and what spawn locations are the safest. Then we're gonna go into which bomb location is best and which operators are best for every single objective that you should be playing. And at the end, I'll have some bonus spots and lines of sight that you should instantly be using. Timestamps will be in the description, so if you would like to skip over any part, feel free to do so. And without wasting any more time, let's get into Chalet V2. On the rework Chalet, there is only three spawn choices, Campfire, Cliffside, and Lakeside. I'm gonna have a safety report card up on the screen and basically all this means is your chance of getting ran out on or spawn killed. Fortunately, all of these spawns are pretty safe, but if I were to pick the most dangerous one, it would be Lakeside, as that side of the map has a lot of windows on it. Any spawn, though, can be risky if you run the wrong way. For a basic guideline, try to stay away from lines of sight of windows and always pre-aim at windows. So now on to the callouts and basic map knowledge of the map. I would recommend you guys rewatch this multiple times until you get every single callout in your head. I'm going to start on the basement and work my way through the downstairs and then we're going to work on the main stairs and then all the way up to the third story. A lot of these callouts remain the same from the original chalet, but some definitely do change. I'm only going to be saying the macro callouts and not the micro callouts. So basically, I'm not going to call out, for example, the car in the garage. Basically, if you see something, that's probably what it's called. So just use that as a generalization. So we're going to work our way from the northern part of the map, from basement to the southern part of the basement, starting in garage closet. Garage closet leads to main garage. This is main garage hallway. This is wine hall. This hallway is called red. This is more stretched than it used to be. Come up here, this is wine stairs. Wine stairs. Wine stairs. Out this door is trench. This is wine cellar. The wine cellar is quite large, so we like to break it down with wine bottles. All of this area, wine shelf over here, wine barrels over here, and then that leads to the blue hallway. This is now called blue tarps, 90 of blue, so this is this 90 hallway. This is just called blue, and then all the way up is blue stairs. I mean, here, this is snowmobile garage, so snowmobile, and then the other one is main garage. Right here, snowmobile. This is usually the common plant area. And then connector is the connecting between the wine cellar and snowmobile. Snowmobile garage. Garage stairs or main stairs is the uh, two calls I always hear. Now moving on upstairs, this is the main floor. So we're on main stairs. This is snowmobile uh, window or snowmobile balcony window. So either of those will work. This is called fireplace or main lobby or lobby. Fireplace, however you want to say it, that'll work. The stairs over here can be either called fireplace stairs or lobby stairs. Either of those will work. This is bar, bar desk. Landing, all of this is landing. Games room, pool table, games corner. This is called bar stock. Bar stock leads to bar. And then back to the hallway we go. Up to landing, which is this hallway. This little room is called mud room. Landing. Stairs back there are called landing stairs, or sometimes people will call them library stairs. This is dining hallway. Dining hallway leads to the dining room. This is the dining dinner table kitchen, kitchen desk, kitchen goes into the trophy room, this whole thing is the trophy room, these are the trophy stairs, and then we are back into kitchen hallway into west main, west main has changed a lot since this new, um, the new rework, the west main has one staircase now and it leads down to the wine stairs, wine stairs leads up to west main, 
And then there's two windows in the west main. Now on the top floor, we're gonna work our way north to south as well. This is the solarium room. These two windows are very popular, so solarium windows, if you would like to say that. This leads to the bathroom. This is bathroom window. Bathroom balcony is also out here. The so bathroom balcony. Moving on in, we enter into the piano room. Piano room is this piano. Outside of this window, on this segment of it, you call this piano balcony instead of bathroom balcony. So I usually cut it off right around this pillar right here. From here over, this is piano. From there over, it's a uh, bathroom. The room in between piano and solarium. Master bedroom, this is master bedroom. And then there's also master closet. Master closet leads back out to piano. And then you have the office here. This little cubby here could be called office cubby or office square, office desk. And outside here, this is the office balcony. This is sometimes referred to a lot of people as canine, especially in the pro community. So this could be either called office balcony window or canine window. Back into office. Office leads to piano. And then you are into library hall. Library hall leads to the top hallway. This is usually referred to as long and this is usually referred to as short. So short top lobby, long top lobby. Lobby leads to the lobby stairs or fireplace stairs. And then there is the last room upstairs, which is the library. Library has two windows. This is called the sandwich window as it's in between two bookshelf bookshelves. Library south hall or balcony. And then this is library west balcony outside of the double window. Back towards library, and then library entrance, then library hall, and library stairs, or you could call it landing stairs. Library hall, long, short, canine window, piano, office, master, bathroom, solarium. So those are the only inside callouts, but I do want to give out a few of the outside callouts here and a few of these little hidden tricks here. And on this map now, you are able to go on the roof. So an added new callout is the roof. There's now easy access to the roof from any which way. This is the big rock. A lot of people like to call it the big rock or cliff rock. This is trench, trench. This is main entrance. This is called snowmobile. This is right outside of the snowmobile garage. So there's two snowmobiles now. Then outside you are looking at helicopter over here. The spawn is back there. This is outside of West Main. And then once again, this is very important. You have the piano balcony and then the bathroom balcony. I like to segment it off right here. So if I see someone on this side, this is piano. This side, bathroom. So now on to defense and objectives. Siege's main focus is on the bomb game mode, so I'm gonna keep it with just the bomb game mode. So there are four sites to pick from. Starting from top to bottom, there's master bedroom office, bar gaming room, kitchen dining room, and then wine cellar and snowmobile garage. I will be excluding the bar and gaming room for simplicity sakes. Out of all four of these, that is the weakest site, so I would recommend not picking that one if you can. So I'm gonna start with wine cellar and snowmobile garage. For the site, you're gonna need some sort of hard breach denial so a mute kaid or a bandit or a mix of all three or two or whatever just you need at least one to control the snowmobile garage wall but if you do bring two make sure the kaid gets the hatches or at least gets the one in the connector room if you have a teammate to hold the blue hallway a mirror can be very good to watch towards the snowmobile garage and the only other essential operator that is a must pick on this site is jaeger or Wamai. you ideally want this to block the drone hole in snowmobile garage this will prevent them from being able to just destroy anything that is defending the wall so a bandit or mute jammer or kaid other than that i can't say any more essential operators once those core operators are taken though just fill in the gaps you're going to need a roamer and you're going to need some hard anchors some good options always for each of those roles include vigil maestro 
echo, but really once you have the main operators that are essential, just fill in the gap however you would like. They've added a lot of more vertical play, so roamers are more essential now than ever whenever you're a defending wine cellar, especially if you are playing a mirror watching towards the snowmobile garage. Shooting on upstairs, we're going to head to the bedroom. So as an attacker, this site is usually pushed horizontally. So the two entrances, the two entrance sides, you have the balcony, the library side, and you also have solarium room. So ultimately, there's not too much to worry about. This site should only have one to two anchors max. Other than that, you're going to want a lot of shallow roamers in the piano room and also in the solarium room. Those two players will be able to hold a very strong crossfire through bathroom. So that entire northern part of the map is completely cut off and your whole rest of your team needs to focus towards the main lobby push, library side push, and K9 balcony push. There's not too many specific operators that are really good for this site, but I would like to see a hard breach denial as in a bandit, mute, or Kaid once again, and that would be good for the box in the office. There's also great potential for a mirror play up towards the office box if you were to reinforce one wall and not reinforce the other. And for this site, I'd like to see trap operators. There are a ton of doorways and stairs that people need to go up in order to get to this, so a capkin, a lesion, an elo would all be decent in this site. As for the last site that I'm going to be going going over, I'm going to be going over kitchen and dining. Honestly, this site and bar and gaming room are not too good, but kitchen and dining is definitely better for lower ranks because they don't know vertical play. If they do, however, kitchen and dining can be absolutely terrible as the entire roof is destructible, so vertical play is huge, but bar and gaming is no easier as you need to control the entire floor above or else the hatches will eat you alive. But as for kitchen and dining, basically the vertical play just switched ways. Previously, you were able to go from underneath and easily get some kills in the trophy room, but now you have to go vertically from above and you could do the same thing. In order to win this side, I think you have to play off of it a lot. You have to control the trophy room and you need to control the top site. The one safe spot on this site for an anchor to play is between the trophy hallway and dining room. There's a little cubby there and that spot is safe from vertical play. Just like every single site on this map, it's always good to have a hard reach denial. That is the one thing. If you are unsure of who to play on the new rework chalet, then I would recommend picking a hard breach denial. So a mute, bandit, or a Kaid. And the same thing goes for this site. You could use a great one on the dining wall to protect your anchors and protect the site. And that's all for the objectives, but I do want to talk about briefly about attacking operators. So I'm only going to point out the most important ones. You're going to want to bring a hard reach no matter what. And the same thing goes for a Thatcher or a Cali. Also, as we've talked about, vertical play is very strong. So bringing a sledge or a buck is always a good option as well. Those are my suggestions as operators that should be picked every single attacking round. But other than that, you could play any other operators just try to play powerful operators as always. So to end off our map breakdown on the rework chalet, I want to go into some bonus spots that you guys can instantly use right whenever you're able to play the new chalet rework. All right, so just some spots to finish this one out. I found a lot of spots with this window. So this window leads to the snowmobile and most likely if they're pushing snowmobile garage, they're going to push it from this way and try to get the uh, wall like that. So from this window, you can see the snowmobiles perfectly. So this is a very big surprise play. But not only that is I like to play this vertically. So from above here, if you were to shoot open something, you know, I'm just shooting it all open for generalness. If this is shot open, you can have a little bit of a range into this uh, left corner of the window here. But more excitingly is if you come back here. So if you are Rook and have like an impact grenade, if you impact this area right here, you can prone, crawl back, and you'll have access to the top of the snowmobile. As you guys can see, this is the snowmobile area. So if you come back here, you can easily pick off heads all day long with this spot. It's absolutely a nutty spot that I've been finding very useful. Another thing that stayed in the game if you've been playing this game for any time is this ladder can be watched from inside the window. A lot of people think it can't anymore, but if you get close enough to the window, you can still watch it while still keeping yourself safe. The only thing you need to watch out for is now that you're able to repel, a lot of people don't like to take the ladder. But just from the test server, I've been getting tons of kills with just pre-aiming this ladder. Other than that, I want to show you guys some of the vertical play tips from this side of the map. So this is definitely whenever you're pushing down. So whenever you shoot through things like this, right, this leads us straight into the kitchen room. So this is the kitchen hatch if you guys remember from the uh, when we were explaining that. So this is the kitchen hatch. So anywhere around here, even if the catch is, hatch is reinforced, if you get top control, you can clear out any roamers behind the kitchen. A lot of people like to sit near the tabletop and the same thing goes for over here. You can move on over to offices and you could get anyone that's camping in the corners 
The popular corners, of course, is the dining room table, so you could easily kill people that are sitting behind the dining room table. And you could also, potentially, if you get in the right angle, you can get people stuck in this one corner. This is the only safe corner in the entire, um, on this entire site, which is way deep in this corner. But if you hop and get far enough over, you will be able to get anyone camping in this corner. This is a popular corner for sure. Now this is quite a risky spawn kill opportunity, but out of this window, the K9 window, you have easy access to see the cliffside rock. Anyone that spawns on this side usually either runs this way or up the rock. So if they do run up the rock, you will have access here. Some alternatives though, is you can come back here further and still get to see a glimpse of their head while not risking your entire life. Other than that though, it's a lot of outweighs, so if you just if you just peek and don't like what you see, you can easily jump across board and jump overboard. So when pushing the bottom basement floor, the mirror is actually very popular. So coming all the way upstairs, you can shoot all the way down into the basement here, and you will have access to shoot the mirror from all the way up here. So you'll be safe from most things here. As long as you clear out this top floor and you have a team, you can easily sneak up here, shotgun through a few walls and then you'll have easy access to even get a kill potentially, but at least open up the mirror. So I like third floor plays like this and a lot of destructibility allows us to do stuff like this and Buck's gun is great for this because you can do it from way up here and still actually be able to shoot through something as far away as that was. So those are just my bonus spots for you guys here on the new rework chalet. I would like to know what else you guys would have added to this to make this even better for the chalet rework map breakdown guide. But hopefully if you are a newer player or if you just wanted to see the new rework chalet, this helped you out. Let me know if you guys want to see any more maps or I could just wait until the new reworked sky or skyscraper. Either way, I hope you really enjoyed this one. If you want more tips and stuff like that, go to the channel's playlist. I have operator guides, general tips, common mistakes, and even what operators to pick as in my top five and tier list. Those are great to pick if you don't know how to pick operators and stuff like that. But that's going to do it for this one. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a fantastic day. Peace out.